And the truck door comes into night! Hey everybody, I have been introduced to this really cool drawing tool. It is called, where is it? It's over here, Doodle 3D. Doodle 3D is, uh, they, they've been selling this as part of tool uh, of a uh, tool chain for other 3D printers and now it is a standalone tool that you can buy a license for and get and it works entirely online. And I love it because it is it, ostensibly for children and kind of baby's first cat. Let me explain how it works. Over here, we've got the 2D view of things where you do all sorts of drawing and stuff on top of what you're doing. And over here, we have the 3D view that you can then take that 2D drawing and manipulate in 3D. So for instance, let me just, while, while uh, I'm working on this, let me also point out that I'm going to be using a tablet, but it is the cheapest tablet that money could buy. It's got the Monoprice name on it, but I actually bought this through Walmart because hey, even cheaper. So yeah, I, I don't, I did not spend very much on this tablet and this is gonna be the tool that I'll be using. But this website also works great on tablets, uh, on, on touchscreen devices. It works equally well as with a mouse or on your screen or whatever. But I'm gonna be doing some drawing later. So I'm gonna wanna have my drawing tools. So right over here, we've got the tools that you use for drawing. Uh, there's the shapes tool here. And let me show you this one really cool, this star, this star here. It makes a five pointed shape, but if you move up and down, the one radius increases. And if you move left and right, the other radius increases. So you can make a nice star shape the way that you want to and release. And then you can select that one and duplicate it and take the duplicate and rotate it around and yeah there let's position it properly there we go and then where these two shapes intersect we can use the fill tool to fill in that shape in the middle and you'll notice in the 3d view we have that shape and i can i can grab that shape and pull it out and work with it independently notice the rest of the lines on on the 3d view over here are are just you know really flat shapes there's there's no substance or size to them they're teeny if you were to export them they would actually be converted into a two millimeter thick wall so i love that about doodle 3d even these these thin walls that you're working with actually become objects and there's a whole tutorial about messing with the the 3d object here uh pulling it up in size and then changing the shape of it with, with these 3D tools. And there's not a whole lot of 3D tools. I mean, there's there's really just that. Uh, but we can make it thinner and then give it some some shape, you know, and then uh, and then twist it. Uh, see, how's that work? There we go, left and right. And ta-da, we've got ourselves a lemon juicer, just like that, just by making a simple shape in 2D and then manipulating it in the 3D view. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to look at some other tools. So let's clear this all out. Um, the other tool that I really love is the draw tool. Uh, there are, sorry, I didn't finish with the shape tools. Uh, this end gone shape, just end gone tool is cool. If you move up or down, you get more sides to it. So you can have a seven sided shape. How often do you need a seven sided shape? Uh, I think the heart tool is just a heart. I don't know what you'd need a heart for, but there you go. You got a heart. You can do whatever you want with it. Let's just undo those out. The drawing tools, where it's at with this tool. So I can, I can take in, in the 2d view and I can draw kind of like a, an S and then I can draw like a more different or S right there. Right. And bring them together. And then I can, uh, make a mouth here and that that mouth was terrible let's do it again we need to ooh, let's line it up a little bit better oh a little, little bit better there we go and uh, let's make this mouth wide open so that we can put some teeth in there and we'll get some the eyes here put a nose here 
and then we'll fill this one in and I'll even pick green for it so there we go and we'll fill the teeth in with yellow just like that oh, teeth are getting independent and you can zoom in there we go see that a little bit better all right what else do we got to do well let's see we got to uh, let's grab our pen tool let's switch the color to red let's give it the wings there we go and another wing and uh, the legs consummate V's not quite in the right place but good enough good enough and uh, let's get one of those beefy arms on there Wow that is shamefully bad never mind it's good enough uh, so let's get the color for the arms in let's shade the arms with the closest to that that they got the flesh tone let's give the wings blue just because we got it and so now let's take a look at this in 3D. It's, it's looking pretty good now in 3D. I'm gonna to switch to the mouse. However, we need to start manipulating the individual shapes. Let me grab the sizer and make this arm a little bit less big like that. I'm not sure where the Trogdor's arm goes. Does it go on one side or the other? Uh, I can move it down, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna make the Trogdor just a little bit shorter so that those consummate Vs show up, but then I'm going to have to uh, select the the teeth and let me select the teeth in the 2d view and then make them much shorter smaller we're gonna need supports to print this but that's all right and let's grab the wings and make them small I think I accidentally made the the arm smaller when I shortened the body although that might be where I needed to be let's add some dimension to the arms so I'll grab a center point and pull it out like that. Maybe I'll, ooh, that one's terrible. Just by clicking and unclicking, we can make these things appear and disappear. There we go. There, now the arm has some proper dimension. Maybe I'll, let's make the body, because this is supposed to be like a snake-like body. So let's, make it go in like this so it's a little bit rounder and here we see some of the weakness of this tool you notice how the chin is going down like this and inside here it doesn't try to conform it to the whole shape the other problem that we see is now the wings are not are not attached at all really what I need to do is grab these wings and move them uh, into the body a little bit so let me grab them here and move them into the body a little bit better otherwise they'll fall out so in the 2d view things start to look like they're falling apart but in the 3d view they look fine this is part of what you have to learn as you're using tinker or uh, not tinker doodle 3d is that sometimes you should build your parts separately and put them together uh, for instance the eyes here I want them to be uh, in there so I'm gonna, you know, move them in there a little bit. Oop, we missed something here. I'm not sure what we missed. There we go. And now the eyes are in place, except I don't want them to be as high like that. We'll go like that. Notice the teeth, these bottom teeth are just not even in the jaw. So let's just grab them and just sink them into the jaw where they belong. That's good enough. That's good enough. Okay, so so you start to see some of the, the limitations and things like that, but I hope that you're also starting to see some of the power that this tool has for, for making modeling just quick and easy. And if you use it on a tablet, it's even easier. It is so, honestly, I, 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 I was impressed with how quickly it was uh, and, and easily it was to make something really cool with this tool okay so there we go we can uh, there's our trog door everything's in place everything's looking good and we can go ahead and export it 
Now let me talk for a second about the export function over here. When you export, yes, you can save it as an STL or you can even save it as an OBJ, which has color data. And I'm super excited to play with some of that. But then you can also send it straight to Shapeways or if you have a printer, which when I, I talked about the printer in another review, a lot of people were like, oh, you're putting your, your 3D printer uh, on the internet of things and it's online and people could hack it. Yes, yeah, sure, potentially, but I'm actually, because of Doodle 3D, I've discovered that it works into this tool chain that makes something very cool possible that you guys will learn about very soon. You can also share it straight to Thingiverse, Sketchfab, My Mini Factory is tied in here. It just goes like right into the workflow. And, and I love that about it. And then you print it out and you've got your 3D model. Now for this one, I actually used the, the function that you see right here, right, right there, uh, that you can import a picture and then I trace the picture. So the, the, the Trogdor that you will have that you can download in the link below is actually truer to model uh, than this one is. This one was literally just thrown together in two seconds, but so cool and so easy. I'm really impressed with Doodle 3D. Now, it's not perfect. Doodle 3D does have some things about it that I don't like. Uh, for instance, the fact that it's so obstensively for children and that they're making almost no effort to try and make this a deeper tool, or rather that they haven't, but they could. One thing that kind of bugs me about it is that you can't define the shape of a circle or square or something when it comes in. Yes, it shows you the dimensions, the radius and whatnot of that circle as you're drawing it, but you kind of have to eyeball where it is and then drop it wherever you want it. And that's, it feels kind of dirty to me. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to be able to, to draw a circle and then even even if it's just for a second before it solidifies as an object be able to type in those dimensions in blender everything that comes in comes in as polygons but for a little while you can type in the dimensions of that object and then when they're solidified to polygons obviously you can push and pull and manipulate it as polygons and so its shape dimensions don't mean anything anymore and the same way with doodle 3d any line that comes in is just a line but you can uh, erase that line and change that line and add to that line and so it makes sense that you can't that they're not objects that you can uh, edit but if for just a second if I could add that in there so that I could make that definition I would love that the other thing that doodle 3d doesn't do is allow you to rotate an object in 3d space which as I was playing with making a chess set and I'll, I'll maybe make some videos later where I'm making a chess set in doodle 3d it would have been nice in my opinion to be able to well, with the knight particularly, draw it laying down and then turn it sideways and put it on its stand. That's not to say that it can't be done in Doodle 3D, but the way that you do it in Doodle 3D, I, it, it would have to be done in Doodle 3D, exported, and then in an external tool, manipulated and put together. I would love to see that done in Doodle 3D. In fact, what I would love to see is that you can define, once you have one shape that you can then go to a 3d tool that allows you to manipulate them in 3d space and put them together however you want and then create a new shape to put together with it and a new shape to put together with it that to me would make this tool in my opinion almost as strong as any cad tool the other thing that doodle 3d doesn't have is holes when I did the Trogdor's nose, I pretty much had to put a hole all the way through it for the nose. Now I could get away with maybe putting a little disc there and making it taller or shorter so that the nose is not all the way through a hole. But it would be nice in Doodle 3D if I could say, okay, this object is solid, but then the hole that I'm putting on it is a hole and it drops down a certain amount. And I feel like that would add a lot of power to Doodle 3D. The last thing about Doodle 3D that I have to make you aware of is that it's not free. 
you can try it for free, but you can't export your objects and send them to Thingiverse or whatever. You're not allowed to save them or, or you only are allowed one object. You're allowed to play with it if you don't pay for it. However, it's only 30 bucks, and that's not a lot to pay for a tool that makes modeling so easy and fun. If you have kids, you should absolutely get Doodle 3D and let them play with it and see what they come up with. And again, like I said, it's baby's first CAD. A lot of what it teaches you how to do, working with a 2D shape and then manipulating that in 3D, is how CAD works. And so getting them thinking in that mentality is a very powerful and positive thing. Overall, I'm super impressed with Doodle 3D and I wanna thank the people who work on Doodle 3D for what they've done and hope that they keep working on it. And I hope that you will check it out and encourage them to keep working on this because as cool of a tool as it is now, I'd love to see some of these changes that I've talked about incorporated into it in the future so that it can be even better. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. If you would like to get yourself your own 3D Trogdor created in Doodle 3D, there will be a link in the description that you can check out. And as always, I want to thank you. I want to thank my Patreon backers and let you know, hey, there's still room back there. Patreon backers get these 3D models early, so if you want to have a chance to get these models before anybody else does, you got to be a Patreon backer. As always, thank you very much for watching. Safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here now for you. Buy it on Amazon.